yourself at home, do your do. Welcome to my pad, this your lab, go create your move. I got a crib by the water, say me casa, su casa. It feels like casa learning. Shout it, you my little mama. What's good, everybody? It's 99 miles per hour with me, Percy Garner, your host, and excited to be in this new studio and uh, also excited about our guest today. Um, I got a lot to learn, even though, you know, we've been you know, getting to know each other over the last few years. He's been very kind to me and helping me in my content creation. And, you know, I'm just very excited to get to this episode. But if you missed last episode, we did have Tyler Light back. The professional golfer, maybe, I guess. I don't know what he is. No, I'm joking. But uh, it, was, it was a good episode, and uh, his energy uh, matches mine. So it was it was a pleasure to have him on. If you didn't see that, go make sure you check that out. And uh, if you are enjoying the content, make sure you like and subscribe. And uh, we're so close, so close to being partner on YouTube. Um, I'm very excited about that, but uh, looking forward to that opportunity. And um, just make sure... Uh, you do leave feedback in the comments as well. Uh, if there's something you want to hear from me or if you want to talk about on another uh, p- uh, episode on the podcast, let me know. Also, thank you for all the people who are watching the pitching tips. And maybe we can get some more today from the guests. So, But uh, also make sure you uh, click the link below in the description and join the Discord community where it's focused on pitching, but we talk other baseball as well. And uh, make sure you go check out percygarner.com. And check out the merch I got there, which gives students uh, some scholarship money for college. So if you want to <laughs> help a young person out, uh, go ahead to percygarner.com and check out the merch. All right. Now that we got that all the way. Um, so <sighs> there's so many things I could, I guess, say about uh, the guest. Um, I've already mentioned they've helped me out in my content creation journey. They've actually recently started personal content creation And uh, a lot of it has just been a pleasure for me to consume. And um, I'm very excited to put it down in the description so you guys can check it out. But this person was pro baseball player for 10 years, Um, you know, played for the team that I got my debut against. Um, Now is just kind of someone I look up to in the business industry as I kind of admire from the sideline. And uh, I guess the head of marketing at Logitech G, which is pretty crazy. I've been a big fan of Logitech for years and now I have a connection that gives me stuff for free. So uh, I appreciate everything. (laughs) But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Jim Hoey. How are you doing, Jim? Good, Percy. Thanks for having me, man. I mean, it's a pleasure to have you. Um, I've felt like I've been trying to schedule this for a while. Then I have to put it off Then say, hey, we can't do it. Then we got to move the date and I appreciate the flexibility. And, uh, you know, I'm anxious to hear about, you know, obviously your journey and and there's MLB playoffs going on right now. So we're not going to let you get through this episode and not ask who you think is going to win the World Series or just who's going to win these championship series. But before, you know, I kind of like to give people a whole picture of what I plan to accomplish in this episode. That way it help me stay on track. Um but the, the content you're creating on um, LinkedIn has been really trying to, you know, focus in and, you know, help those people who kind of get a look at athletes and how we think and how it can transition into the business world. And and not for, you know, there's a lot of athletes that are probably trouble transitioning over or maybe just don't think they can do it. They don't have the skill or the, the knowledge, uh, but you're here to tell them otherwise. And uh, we're going to compare the athletic life <laughs> uh, with mm-hmm. you know the business world and a competitive market, which obviously Logitech is in. Uh, I don't know if it's too competitive, but you know, people are trying to compete. <clears throat> and then we'll talk about you know struggles and stuff uh, that maybe athletes or maybe yourself uh, have faced. But <clears throat> I want to get back to it. MOB playoffs. Um, obviously, Texas is leading the series, and the Phillies leading the series. Uh, who you got? Who you got? And in, in each in each series, do you think Texas is gonna uh, continue and just and end up in the World Series against the Phillies, or who do you got? You know, it's uh, as you watch it, and you, you know, before the playoffs starts, you start to predict, right? You think this per, this team is you know either either carrying momentum from the season, or you know, just, just historically throughout the season been strong. But I think that's gone out the window in the last. A uh, couple games, I should say, series is uh, 
And we're looking at what Texas and Houston. Texas is coming off on top 2 0. I think they're 2 0 right now, yeah. right? Yep. And looking strong and, you know, carrying whatever they had from, from the end of the season to the playoffs. But then, you know, I come back to, um, you know, I like, I like the Phillies personally. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's a, uh, it's where I grew up in, in South Jersey. Uh, it's also a combination. I wasn't a Phillies fan, but my, you know, my <laughs> grandparent was. So, uh, and this is a combination of one of the guys who's my, you know, one of my best friends is the first base coach of the the, the Phillies right now. So you kind of have to pull for him. You know, I want to see him bring one home for the team, the city, and and, and himself. Yeah, that'd be dope. I mean, I saw that you were, you know, from the New Jersey area, and I didn't know if you were from Trenton or just went to school there. Um, but I obviously I got to play in Trenton against the Yankees double uh, A team. And uh, I thought that was a, a pretty, you know, the like people are kind of close. It reminded me of Columbus, which was a Yankees <laughs> organization as well back in the day. Yeah. But I always like those fields where it's like immediately you're in the, you know, the city and there was people there. It's not like off in the middle of nowhere. So I enjoyed playing Trenton. I didn't perform the best there, but <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, I obviously I was drafted by the Phillies and, you know, the marriage wasn't that great, but I still pull for those guys because they're all great people. And uh, even one of my managers is, is up there as one of the coaches helping out uh, Dusty Wathen. And uh, man, <laughs> I mean, it's hard not to root for them. You, and, you know, the Philly fans are crazy. When you get drafted by an organization, you kind of feel like they're your family. You get to know the coaches who've probably been or still there and been around for a long time. And you just, you know, the players, they come up and they go through and, it just becomes a family at some point. You spend a lot of your career, especially when you get drafted, and bulk of your career, I spent seven with the Orioles, and that's who I was Dang. drafted by. And so you spend a bulk of your career with one team, and you know you fall into the pattern of like you're rooting for them. And for, unfortunately, they lost <laughs> in the first round. And they lost pretty quickly. Yeah. Well, um, I, I so, mean, I got to play uh, with them as well. So yeah, I was rooting for them a little yeah. bit as well. So, but uh, yeah, you got you have to. They become home. Yeah, and I just admire kind of how they got their program there after it was, you know, not doing so well for so many years and, 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 you know, trying to make a run at the playoffs. So I admire the Orioles. I wish I, I would have had a longer, um, you know, stint with them uh, back in the Buck Showalter days, but uh, it was a good experience, but <clears throat> you know, I, I think I'm going to go with the, with the Phillies. And I know there's probably people out there that yeah. really hope Texas pulls this out, but yeah, I'm looking to, it'll be a, a fun, enjoyable series, Texas first uh, Phillies and, you know, Schwarber's from Ohio, sort of, I mean, he is from Ohio, but I, <laughs> I kind of cheer for him a little bit, but I still have a sour taste in my mouth from, you know, he was a cub. So <laughs> when, and when my real team, the guardians, yeah. you know, when we, when we lost, uh, the World Series, but <laughs> enough about me. Everyone's uh, got their unique stories, huh? It has nothing to do with the actual teams themselves. It's no, no. Just everything to do with <laughs> what happened when you were playing or what happened when you were watching in that specific day. And all of a sudden, nah, I don't like them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, man, again, man, I'm, I'm excited to have you on the show. I just want to get like a quick, we're going to dive in deeper once we get, you know, going. But for me, I, I'm kind of intrigued of you know the journey of how you you know left pro ball and now you're just you know killing it in the business world and the, the gaming world and uh technology so all these things yeah, no. um how is life right now for for someone in your position at a competitive uh market in the gaming scene and you know how just how is that because i'm sure it's crazy no it's 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 excellent so i, I always tell people that to follow your passion do what you like, and it won't be won't be a job. And you're gonna have fun to what you do. And I think that comes down to everything you do in life, because then become your journey there from either starting to becoming an expert in whatever you feel like your career path is is simpler, because you're hungry to learn. You're hungry to do more, and it's not wake up and oh i have to go to work it's okay you know what do i what do i get to learn today and how do i apply it and and if you just continue to take those steps and we as athletes know it's the process to get there it's not so much the game it's the in between it's the 
It's the you know, it, pitching. It's the drill work you do off the field. It's the weightlifting. It's the nutrition. It's all of that stuff that you do off the field for that one moment on the field. It's the same in business. It's everything that you've done to learn, to apply yourself, to grow as an individual, and then you just take it into execution uh, in the business world. And and that execution could be anything. It could, it could range from you know putting uh, you know using a piece of technology to just communicating you know what you want to do to others which I, I still feel is the number one skill set is communication in the build business world outside of you know in baseball it could be uh, what what pitch you have that could be your biggest strength and so in this way in the business world it's uh, communication so I, it all comes back to me is just passion we we were, we were passionate about baseball we yeah. played at a young age we love the game of it the sport of it the camaraderie of others the 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 progression and the practice it took to get to where you are and the pursuit of perfection if that's gonna if that's what you're gonna call it and that game was just carried over into a career and we never thought of it as oh i have to get up and go to work you just did it because you enjoyed it and it's the same thing with your career you didn't wake up to go to work no you did it because you enjoyed it i mean that's true i can i'm definitely i mean there were some days you know, I had to remind some teammates like, hey, guys, we're getting paid to play with a ball. Let's let's just relax. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but for the most part, and I'm, there are some days that are grinds too. Yeah. <laughs> there were some days that you were like, oh, you know, like, I mean, don't don't let's be honest. There are those days. There's going to be those and, you know, whatever it may have been. But uh, you just push through. them. Yeah. And it's a lot easier uh, when you're doing something like you said, like you like or that you love. It's so much easier to learn something new uh, about, you know, what you're passionate about. And (laughs) when you have to get through those days, you know, if it's something you hate, those are the days you probably break and just say, nope, not doing it. But if it's something you love and you're striving towards something, it's it's I wouldn't say it's easy, but, you know, it's easier in those times to go. You know what? Yeah, that's when you because I want to say I was taught not to really, you know, they wanted you to be present, not to look towards the goal, which with the Phillies was probably good advice because, you know, they had like eight guys making 20 million a year and they were all the best at their position when I got drafted. And I'm like, how am I supposed to play on this team? Um, but, and for them, they would preach, hey, be where you are. Be the best you can be where you are. Don't worry about, you know, Philadelphia and all that. Um, but then when I went to Cleveland, it was, it was, it was a little bit different. Uh, so I think there's there's times when you need to focus on where you're at, and then there's times where maybe it's that day and you're like, oh yeah, remember the end goal because <laughs> you got to get through. Yep. But um, but that's dope, man. Um, you know, well, that's so true though. That coming back to what you said, you know, you can only control what you can control. So in baseball terms, if you're thinking about giving up a home run, that's not something you can control. And you're going to miss because you're because you can only focus on one thing at a time. You're going to miss the objective of hitting your spots, hitting a location. And it's the same applies everywhere. If you're if you're thinking about the end state without being in the moment, per your your coach or your the organizations, you're you're never going to um, achieve what you want to achieve. It you may, but it's never going to be optimal. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, and that, I was I was living proof of that. Um, so, I mean, obviously, I made it to the big leagues, but that was later when I was with the Phillies. I was always worried about okay, GM's in town, you know, who's here? I got to perform tonight, yeah. and you know, and all that stuff. The hardest thing to do. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so hard to do. Yeah, and I can see how that translates to the business world as well. Uh, as well, obviously, if you know you're getting an individual, you know, report, and it's someone high in the company, you're like, oh crap, you're probably not going to perform the best. As long as you're like, well, I've, I've done this job every day. Like, there's no reason, there's no reason to change my mindset and get a, get scared just because I'm going into a meeting or something like that with someone in, of a, of higher importance. Because they're still, they probably were once in your position and they were probably feeling the same yeah. way. So, however you can fix your brain, you know, to uh, when I was facing maybe superior talent or bigger people, I would always say, well, they put their shoes and socks on and their pants on all the same way I do. So they're, they're not superhuman. So. Exactly. <laughs> and so, and but you, you nailed it too. How do you fix the way you think in order to be comfortable, be comfortable with the uncomfortable? And so if you're able to do that within the moment, take some time to, to, 
to learn how to do that and then replicate and practice how you're doing that. Then it's everything in the business world and a lot of people are scared of public speaking or just presenting to a group of individuals that you don't know. That's the prime example to being in control of what you can control. Not worrying about what they're thinking of you because you can't control that, but controlling the messaging that you're giving to them. So this is just it's just various examples that you can find over and over in your life, no matter what you do, that will apply to that that premise. I mean, we can keep going, but <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, exactly. I want to exactly. I want to hear about you know because we all we both know there's so many things I want to you know ask you, learn from you, and and share with the audience, but uh, we only got limited time, so. Definitely probably going to have to have you back at a later date just to to finish what we started, which we only do with a couple guests. So obviously you'd be special, <laughs> Jim. Um, <laughs> but uh, I really wanted to get into kind of the, the content that you're creating. And, um, you know, I was, you know, early on, right when you first started, I was just always on LinkedIn. I don't know what it is now. I just feel like I'm like, I don't, I'm not consuming as much content like that type of content, which is helpful in business world and stuff like that. You know, I'm still, I'm always on YouTube, whether I'm trying to learn sign language or something like that. But I feel like LinkedIn is a good space to maybe help you those days to be motivated or, or, you know, momentarily to, okay, you know, uh, there's always, there's other people in the business world struggling something with, uh, whether it be, you know, like you said, public speaking or something, you can learn something from most people that post on LinkedIn. And I'm, I'm glad that you're, you know, taking that platform um, and, uh, you know, really kind of kind of doing what I'm doing with Instagram right now. I'll always post on YouTube, but Instagram is kind of like what I'm favoring. And uh, I kind of just wanted to have you talk about like the, the content that you're creating and and, you know, comparing the athletes, you know, mindset and kind of what we've already been talking about. But, you know, I guess what inspired you first before we get into it, what inspired you to kind of take this leap into creating content on LinkedIn and, and, you know, making it for the, the business minded people. Yeah. I think it was just conversations like this. The more and more you have it outside of when, when you get done baseball and you start talking about either to other athletes or to people in the, in the business world. And you talk, talk about these things that are perseverance that, or, or just repetition and practice that we're talking about here that we just got sidetracked on. Then you start, <laughs> understanding that there is a different mentality that athletes have and they've only they've only mastered it through repetition and practice through their trade and that's everything that we mentioned doing off the field and there's a lot of personality traits and skill sets that baseball should say sports builds and instills in character of an individual that it translates into the business world, but is unique as well. You know, we're we're always on a team. Uh, we're um, uh, working together to achieve a common goal. We're trying to figure out the little little niches to be better than the next. We're very competitive, and to be very competitive, you have to go and search for the information to win in whatever it may be, and then you have to go out and you have to practice what that is. And there's so many examples that we can teach just from a, you know, from a pitcher's perspective. And if I want to throw later in my, later in my career, I learned to split finger fastball and I had to go and figure that out. I had to go practice it. And then I had to go throw it in games and build confidence behind the pitch. The same thing that happens in the business world of, okay, I have to learn um, in, in marketing, there's maybe, you know, paid media or what an influencer network looks like or what content creation looks like, but what's the the subject matter within that content that's going to then uh, either provide value to your consumers. So you have to start figuring out these pieces. You have to problem solve. So once you start doing that, that that same mindset of seeking execution practice, seek and that I should say feedback loop and loop is is just ingrained to us because that's what we did. And baseball is or sports is a um, a a, a, I don't even know the term to use, but you learn quickly through it, right? You, 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 on a daily basis, you know if you won or you lost. Yeah. Sometimes in business, it could be nine months, 12 months. Like there's a very significant time delay, whether you 
ideation, execution, feedback, whether or not you achieved a result. In baseball, I mean, it could be one pitch. It could be <laughs> within 10 seconds. It's either over the fence or it's, you know, ground ball, double play. So there's there's that in being able to overcome it, those adversities, like the hardest thing to do. Give up a home run. Yeah, I was about to say, you just posted and this, right? have to get on the mound. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have to get run, have to get back on the there. mound. Yeah. After knowing maybe maybe you just gave up the, the lead, to, but just to tie the game. And you're still tied, but you gave up the lead. So you still have to go and compete so you don't lose. So it's like it's a it's a weird uh, dynamic that, that that mentally you have to overcome. And and you only you only have done that through sports. You can't do that anywhere else. And so, yeah, that, that mentality I wanted to share, just talking to you, talking to everybody, it's, it's, it's unique. And I want to make sure I'd be able to get out there and share it with everyone. Yeah. I mean, and I was thinking of something when you were talking to, um, and it's just funny that you brought it up, but of course, like I do on various occasions, which some people say I'm too young to be doing this. You brought up another point about your post and the hardest thing to do that I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Say <laughs> to respond to the one thing, but um, I I still agree with with what you're talking about, and um, not only is it important, you know, to to make the parallels, especially for those athletes, but I think it's important for the business world because they they kind of look at athletes as like something totally different that they could they may not be blessed uh, ta- or like have the talents that we do to throw a ball or to hit a ball or to run fast or anything like that. But you still need a lot of the the same you know skills that are built that not that aren't gifted to you when you're born, but that are built that you need to perfect and work on daily in the business world. That you have to do on the same thing, team, team, like you said. Yeah. Um, so I just <laughs> I felt like there's many people that are just like look at athletes like ah oh, you know, and yes, it, it's it's great entertainment and it's awesome to see someone hit a ball 400 feet or to see a guy like Jim, which from what I heard, you know, you were taught, you clocked out at a, at a hundred miles an hour, which <laughs> is very unfortunate. You Back know. in the day, isn't that rare? And then like a, everyone I feel like throws a hundred yeah. nowadays. <laughs> that what, is true. Where did that come from? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I never hit a hundred, but I was pretty <laughs> close, but, <laughs> but, uh, but that is true. I feel like everyone's still hundred now. But, everyone's still hundred. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, but uh, I just feel like it, it's good that we're making these comparisons because I'm hoping that the, the people that are tuning in are realizing, okay, there's a lot more parallels than there is. And we talked about this years ago when we first started yeah. uh, communicating, and uh, I just thought it was pretty neat. And I was just so amazed, like, how You're, in the heck? Oh, go ahead. You're right. Everyone can do it. It's just that sports breaks it down into bite-sized pieces that someone can say and make the parallels like, oh, well, I can do it. And it's because, you know, everyone's either loves a particular sport, but it's relatable. They can understand it. They can kind of see it. Oh, yeah, he does take BP and then he goes out there and hits. So you do see the practice. You, you miss may miss some of the other stuff. But then you speak to it in sports terms and someone in the business world goes, oh, that makes sense. I can do that. And I think that's the goal. Like, you can do it. You just have to understand how it's done in 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 the metaphor of sports and you can get it. Yeah. Oh, and I, I just remembered. So when we were talking about how I could <laughs> your feedback in business world, obviously in sports, is sometimes immediate. But the feedback in the business world could take, like you said, nine months. Um, the, one of the first jobs I was trying to obtain after, you know, post baseball career, uh, that was one of the things that the person hiring me or not hiring me was worried about. He was like, uh, you know, there's something he's like, I really, you know, I, you're a great person, all this, but you know, the, the cycle that we have in our, for our sales, it's, it could be 12 months. And I just, he just didn't think I could do that because I'm used to like, <laughs> you know, instant mm. feedback, like, or, and I'm like, Oh, you know, Oh, well, I mean, it wasn't meant to be, but it's just funny that you brought that up to how, how the, the difference between sports and the, and the business world and <laughs> the business world is crazy because, there could be all millions and millions of dollars invested in this, you know, project. And then if it just falls flat, you're just like, Oh, <laughs> which I guess yeah. if you're looking from the front office aspect in baseball, that's kind of, they invest millions in an 18 year old or a 21 year old. And 
you know, eventually, you know, you're hoping pans out, but so I guess that's a different yeah, aspect. You don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, I mean, look how many first rounders just don't make it to, in, in baseball. It's a little bit more difficult. You have yeah. a lot of rounds, but you know, in football, it's, it's, it's pretty easy. I mean, you're, you're going right to the NFL if you yeah. draft in the first round, even the fifth round. It's just different, but I almost, I disagree with, with the, with whoever that was that was saying, you know, you're used to short, you know, um, um, bursts of wins or losses, but this could be a 12 month sales cycle. Well, no, you have a competitor on your hands and that competitor is going to do everything they can to try to win, which would be their goal, their KPI, key performance indicator, like mm-hmm. whatever that may be, that person is going to try to beat that. And I always think, cause you know, coming out of, of baseball, it was, uh, you have zero years of experience and you, you, you don't know what to do. And, and, and I laugh at that now. And <laughs> and this goes to anybody, right? If you have that right mindset and you have zero years of experience, but that mindset is competitive enough, I guarantee you in one year's time, you may be better than 50% of the other people in the position, whatever it may be. Two years time, be even exponentially more because the more you grow, the more you learn, the more you're hungry, right? That t- term hungry is used in sports all the time. Oh, he's hungry. You know, that person's going to win. So it's the same, it's the mentality that you have. And so again, I, I, I myself will look for athletes. I'll, I'll look for that competitive mindset. I've spoken to Robert from Shark Tank. He seeks out competitors mm. uh, and athletes because of that mindset. I've had a conversation with him. It's just unique that um, um, everybody you talk to who, who understands, who has been an athlete, will think the same way and understand because they've done it why yeah i mean i mean i I, i'm i'm right where you are and i i agree um and i think it's uh it's it's pretty neat though that you got to talk to (laughs) robert for shark tank um but uh even though that same company they hired a relative of mine who was a dancer who had no marketing experience ever she just had a horrific injury she no longer could dance and that same company that had hired me hired her over two tenured marketing professionals and now she has her own marketing business basically exactly what you said she was a competitor and she was hungry and the two tenured marketing people they were just kind of status quo and she was looking to make a splash and then here we are and she's speaking at Gary V conferences and stuff <laughs> It's like, it's crazy. Hey. So, and I had her on the to- uh, the show as well. So shout out to Denny, but, um, <clears throat> it's a mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Just and, goes to show you. Yeah. And spe- that's and, your limitation. And, and speaking of mindset, sorry to cut you off. Um, no, you know, the, 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 one of the things I always wanted to, cause when we were growing up, it was, Oh, you can't game. That's, there's no future in that. You know, there was no competitive, side that I was kind of, you know, was with the ne- the person next to you. There was no online gaming, but, <laughs> um, and you were kind of looked at differently, uh, you know, gaming and stuff like that. Now it's a whole different ball game. There's scholarships. Um, there's people, you know, making a living off of, of gaming. And obviously you're a big part of that whole, uh, you know, market and that the, just the dealing with, you know, athletes, cause that's what I'll call them. Um, I, I just want to know, like, how are they, you know, dealing with, cause you know, we dealt with, uh, maybe a Nike, uh, person who would come and show the product to us players. And, and I'm assuming you did that upon like at some point in your career, how are, you know, these, these athletes different from, you know, traditional athletes? Do they, are they prima donnas? <laughs> Or are they like, I'm assuming they're really invested in, I would say most athletes, I don't know how you were, but you're probably not worried about, hey, how many, you know, cleats do I have at the bottom? What's the cushioning? What's the sole like on these cleats? You know, you made a, you might have looked into your glove a lot, but from what I'm think, I'm assuming, you can correct me, but I'm assuming that, you know, pro gamers are looking at the technology and stuff they're using way more than what, you know, professional athletes look at their equipment. Is that true? Yeah. You know, it's funny you say that because I never thought about it. And then as you're talking, um, I'm thinking, and I don't know if, if you do this too, but I can see like 
this per- person matches this person or this person matches this person personality wise right so somebody in esports could be like somebody i know in baseball and have the same sort of characteristic because there are people that care about technology they care about you know what the the skates on the mouse are which is the bottom of the mouse they care about the shape of the mouse and then there are people that go no just give me a mouse i'm gonna just go shoot people like like <laughs> it's it's kind of like baseball right the guy in baseball wants to watch video all the time and wants to really be ingrained in their in 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 what drills they're doing before the game and then you got the going guy that just grows shows up the field grabs a bat and starts swinging like it's it's kind of all over the rage map and those are the personalities that could that go hand in hand so I don't know if I can put a, a finger on a specific personality other than the fact that they, you correct, you, you nailed it. They are athletes. Like if you think about the stress they endure, they think about the precision that they need. They think about the training they need to, to, to perform in a in arena environment, no less, whether it be streaming or whether it be against another team in an arena. There's a lot of the same factors that go into it. And I still think without the physical exertion, they are athletes. I mean, you can, you know, curling could be the same thing. You know, curlers are athletes and there's not a lot of sweat going on there, but <laughs> actually the guy that sweeps, you know what? I can take that back. The guy that sweeps putting in some effort, <laughs> but there are other sports out there that may not have the level of physical exertion, but it, it's everything that comes into it. It's the preparation, it's the physical endurance and the stress, it's being, you know, the highest your capabilities and achieving success no matter what it may be. So yeah, I uh, that may be the common thread through everything and they still have uh, the same mentality and the mindsets of a competitor. That's dope. I'm, uh, I think that is like the best, you know, truest answer. And as I was saying that question, you know, about comparing, you know, athletes, traditional athletes to, you know, gaming athletes. I just, I was like, well, I bet there's different people. There's probably some people that don't really, as long as the mouse is, you know, a certain shape or a certain, they, they're not really like, oh, like, look at this or using all the features. They're just yeah. like, okay, does it help me get, like, shoot heads? That's all I care about. So uh, yeah. uh, I think that was, uh, that was the best way to answer that. And I think that's the truest way because everybody's different. So, um, the one thing I did want to, you know, before we wrapped up, I don't know if you, you know, you might have an answer right on the top of your head and you're maybe have something that you can't share because you know it's about to just blow up and you're like, uh, this is, you know, one of my secrets that I'm holding on to. But, you know, the last question I was thinking of is because I've been getting into marketing, obviously not on your level when I'm learning about how to, you know, I guess, get more people to donate to my organization and also get more people to ask for money from my organization. And it's super challenging, um, especially when I'm the only full-time employee at my organization. (laughs) But how, especially on your level, how, or I guess, what is the next innovation in marketing or something new that's like, okay, this is really going to change the game for all companies or, you know, huge companies like Logitech or even something small as my, the charity that I, uh, that I work for. <laughs> There's a couple components to that. One staple will always be consistent no matter the test of time and it's emotional storytelling, being able to connect with your audience through, through a story that will resonate with them. And that story could be inspirational it could be humor. It could be, um, uh, sadness could be fear honestly but it's really just connecting with uh um them through storytelling and that'll always be here now the tools that we have the channels that we go to will always be evolving and changing you know right now you know you can look at influencer marketing as a channel you can look at all your social media channels as ways of getting that emotional story message out but then you have AI tools as well, which I am not an expert on. And I I keep trying to learn more and more and more. And I think everybody right now is trying to get underneath what AI tools can do, can achieve, what is its limitations, because there are ways that are going to be able to maybe make content easier or maybe help shape what that story arc is. And uh, I'm still trying to figure it out. Honestly, I don't, I don't really have all the answers and 
I've, I've been, I read articles, I watch TikTok on AI, like I try to learn as much as possible, which goes into uh, uh, always learning and being passionate about what you do. If I wasn't passionate about it, I wouldn't learn about it and I'd be behind in the time. So I'm trying to get up on it. And um, but, uh, but again, the throughput, uh, through line that you always come back to is just uh, trying to, to be emotional in your storytelling. And I mean, the one thing that there's a book I still haven't read all the way through, but it, it's basically talking about what you just said. And it, it's just funny because always this is the example I always use when I hear someone talking about that is, you know, Apple, you know, Steve Jobs went away to Pixar, which obviously Pixar is one of the best storytelling companies there is. And then he, when he came back to Apple, that's when they kind of took off because that's yeah. kind of what they do. Um, so love that answer. And, you know, is there is there something you know because i usually try to end with either the, these fast questions but um i'm just curious for someone like yourself instead of going like hey which favorite car which favorite is I, I i'm curious about where what do you see and i know this is hard to answer but what do you see in your career like the trajectory you know what are your you know goals or things you want to accomplish in the business world or you know or is there like a number of mice and headsets and keyboards you want to give to the Garner family or something like that? <laughs> no, what are your career goals that you see? Cause you know, you're so young, you got plenty of time, uh, you know, in this Avenue that you're in or plenty of time to change avenues too. So. Yeah, no, I've, I've the good news is I found my niche in marketing uh, and, and specifically in product marketing. So the more I, I learn, it's it's almost what, what, what I don't know if you do, and I'd love to learn that one too, is like, you know, what you do with baseball and people come and ask you questions because you've achieved this, you've done this, and now they're like, how do I help my son? Or if they're a teenager, how do I get to that next level? The beauty of of, of having that information is giving it back to them. Hey, you know, go to this showcase, do this, do this skill set. Let me look at you know your your mechanics. Just make them give them a couple extra uh, uh, ideas so that they go back and they do the work of repetition. And I think that's the same thing that holds true for me in marketing. Is I've learned so much and I've acquired acquired this knowledge over time. How do I continue to expand my knowledge? But at the same time, how do I can continue to pass that along to others? And I think that's the the beauty of of just being in the positions that I get to be in. One, the athlete mentality, that's unique. And two, have the knowledge and skill sets of marketing, combine them with both, and then can, can deliver both of those to, to anybody that really asks or wants to know. Again, coming back to LinkedIn content is the reason for doing it. It's like I have, we've had multi the, multiple conversations. Every conversation I have goes, you know, you should, you should create content around this. You should tell people this. You should do public speaking. You should, you know, go up on stage and tell everyone. So, so of course, when you hear that over and over, you're like, all right, well, I have to kind of act on it now. So, yes, that's <laughs> my ultimate goal is to learn as much as I can to continue to figure out new ways to market and sell product and at the same time teach others on how I did it just like in baseball. That's dope. Well, thanks for sharing, Jim. I do got one more thing before we end this. How does it feel? Because I don't, I don't, I've never experienced this or worked for a company where you're number one. And I know I recently just seen, because I know you specialize in, in some of the, the racing gear, uh, especially was huge over COVID. Obviously, you couldn't be in person in races and stuff. But how's it feel to be like, you know, marketing the number one product in your area? Is that like, you're just like, well, we're the best. Obviously, you need to continue to grow and strive. But is is that a different feeling, uh, you know, as we're like, hey, we have the number one product and this this project worked? <laughs> the hardest part is staying at top. And so we, we try to figure out, and, that, and that's when you have to be innovative. So you're going to find people always catch up and what's next so you have to be a visionary in where we're going to go what are new input devices well, how are we going to get to the next level of technology so it's it's quite hard because then you have to operate the business at the same time so while you're thinking ahead but answering questions in the present 
you kind of have to find time to go even further ahead. So, <laughs> and then plan for that and then figure out how to get to that point. Yeah. It's uh it's a, it's quite the challenge, <laughs> Good um, luck. but it is, it's, we, yeah, we're, it's, it's quite, uh, and we're number one in a, in a variety of categories, which is also, um, also credit to the, the entire team. Again, a team, the team is massive from engineers to marketers to sales. So, um, yeah, that's that's the challenges that we face. That, that uh, you know, as soon as you put something out there, innovative, someone else is right behind you, figuring out what you did, copying it, and then what's next. That's dope. Well, um, I appreciate everything that you know you've done for me over the years. Appreciate the friendship, and uh, obviously appreciate you coming yeah. on to the podcast. Yes. And uh, you know, we'll have all of. Uh, Jim's social links that he uses in the description. Um, we'll be sharing clips of all the best things that Jim said. Jim said during this whole show, maybe it's some it. things if I, you know, offered anything. Um, but uh, make sure you are following uh, me and Jim. Um, and I guess I'll say it too. You know, follow the Dogs Podcast too as well. We'll put that in the description as well. Um, but uh, make sure you guys like, subscribe, all that stuff. I, I appreciate you guys, you know, continue to, you know, watch these podcasts and uh, I'm trying to get, you know, bigger and better guests uh, every time. And uh, again, appreciate Jim for coming on and it was an honor to have you on the show. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to the, some of the new stuff. I know you got, uh, Logitech just released new, new mice and keyboards, stuff like that. But I'm always just, I just love, you know, the products that you guys yeah. have. So I'm always like, you know, what's going on with this? So um, I always lean toward, I try not to be a shill or whatever, but, but when, like you said, you don't want to in a whole bunch of categories. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll plug some of those, uh, you know, no affiliate marketing, just if you want to see some new stuff from Logitech, links will be down below as well, uh, because that's what I use. Um, and, you know, I'm not the best gamer, but they help out a lot. So, <laughs> but um, again, thank you guys all for tuning in. Our next episode will be uh, episode 100. I don't know if we're going to do anything special. This We should have done something special for this. Maybe we will. This is episode 99 and this is 99 miles per hour. So that's another reason. You feel, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> you should feel special again. <laughs> and, we're, and we're both throwing 99 in our hate day. <laughs> yes, let's do it. And, you know. You did throw a hundred too, but it's all good. <laughs> no. But, uh, but, uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode again. Uh, follow Jim on his socials, check him out on LinkedIn. He's making great content there. And, uh, some of the other things we touched on, I want to make sure you guys maybe follow Brandon Geyer on LinkedIn as well. He's got a lot of, uh, mental, I guess he's, he's the mental, uh, performance coach, uh, for the angels. And he also does a lot of stuff with his own, goes around and speaks to kids and, and uh, baseball players around the, around the nation. So all these good things to follow and, and, and learn something from. So, uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace. I got a crib out of water. Say me cause it's too constant. It feels like I'm a blunder. Shout it, you my little mama. High category by the water. Say me cause it's too constant. It feels like I'm a blunder. Shout it, you my little mama. She be on that hindi. I like that corona. Mm